Hello there, welcome to this Blythe online art class. My name is Mindy Lee and today we're going to be looking at the spaces in between things. So you will need something to draw with and some paper. Any size paper, um, anything really to draw with, but probably pencil and eraser or charcoal and an eraser will work best. I'm going to be using charcoal and you'll need to set up a still life something that has spaces in between. So a chair is a classic example because it has these um, spaces in between the back slats um, or a plant which has spaces in between the stems maybe or spaces in between the leaves. Okay, so actually just before we start um, I just want to reassure you because this is a backwards way round of working. So we're thinking in the inverse to how we usually go about making a, a picture, painting, drawing. Um, so it might give you a bit of a weird head um, just while you get used to it, but it is only practice. So stick with it, try it a few times and you'll soon get um, really good at doing it. Okay, um, let's go. So please try and just look at the space in between um, your drawing, okay? So not this, <laughs> okay? So here I'm drawing the object out and then I'd be colouring the negative space in, okay? But I want you to go the other way round. So I can see proportionately that this is too fat already looking at the negative space, that gap is smaller. So it should be more here. Okay, so instead, just leave the object white and let's work round, just filling in the gaps. Okay, leave the Leave the object alone and just make the space present. Okay, we can use the negative space uh, to emphasize the object that you're drawing. You could use it to undermine the object. You could contrast with the object, um, contrasting colors or textures or tone. Um, you could leave it blank to create an emptiness if you wanted. It's just being aware really of what it's doing in the space. Okay. So the chair is starting to appear through the gap. Okay. I'm trying not to use uh, too many outlines as well just a different way to find an object. Okay, now you can have a go at your object for half an hour, 40 minutes or so, or longer if you like. Um, and then we'll meet up again at the end and I'll show you what I have drawn. Okay, good luck. Okay, so I have been drawing for the past half an hour, 40 minutes, um, just looking at the background space and the space in between and leaving the chair and the plant as best I can, um, the flat colour of the paper. Um, I've tried a few different techniques just to show you how you can use the background in different ways. So quite an aggressive line on the floor that's biting into the leg here. Um, it's really dominant part of the image. So it's sort of undermining the presence of the chair. I'm more drawn to looking here. Um, and then gentler marks that don't allow the chair to pop forwards and he's dissolving into the radiator space as well. So it's destabilizing the form of the chair, which is another way to go about it. Um, and then biting in there with the uh, the marks kind of chewing into the chair, like teeth around that area. Um, and then popping the chair out here so it feels like it's zooming out 
of the image a bit more using really dark shadows around the bottom and up the side and in between here um, and then a few puncture po points of, uh, of shadow around the chair. Um, I could just spend all day going into this um, plant, it's really kind of excitingly complicated um, and then there's a whole wall raging up here between these triangular shards of uh, gaps in between a whole um, flurry of leaves so um, that's really nice where the actual negative space and the positive space are getting really kind of involved and entangled with each other. Um, Mondrian did some amazing paintings looking at the spaces in between um, leaves and branches of trees as his early work which might be worth um, checking out. Um, I know it's a bit tricky to get your head round working this way because um, you're kind of thinking in opposite terms but hopefully it will give you a fresh way to approach thinking about still lives and be interesting to see how that integrates into your practice. I um, hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.